Whenever trust is broken in a marriage, whether it's from infidelity or some other type of broken trust, there has to be a starting point in order to move forward. Uh, Sometimes we call that ground zero. And so today on this episode, what we're going to talk about, we're going to actually share four S's so that you'll be able to remember this really easily. And these four S's are going to help you get to ground zero so that you can start fresh in your marriage. Stay tuned. Hello, folks. Welcome back to another episode of the Redeemed Marriage Podcast. If y'all could only see Heather's eyes rolling at me whenever I say hello, folks. Well, and I was going to say, and hey, turkey. (laughs) Oh, Lord, have mercy. Since we're close to Thanksgiving. I would have rolled my eyes then. <laughs> we are close to Thanksgiving, maybe. But you know, the it's funny, we always, we try to make these what they call evergreen episodes. So you can go back and listen to them anytime. Um, and they're going to always apply. But there's, a lot of times we'll, we'll say some things that, you know, maybe have just happened or are coming up or whatever. But I had somebody today that reached out to us on social media and asked if we were the same thing as Three Strands Marriage because they had just found us today and were starting with the first episode. Oh, wow. And I was like, I didn't oh, think about that. good luck with that first episode. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, Maybe you could skip forward. I, a no, bit. I was like, hey, the content's great. The quality, not so great. But hey, we, <laughs> we, uh, yeah. So I, I just, I started thinking about it and I was like, man, you know, people do go back and listen to these. And so, you know, we have to be really careful and not tell a lot of like current event type stuff. You mean like today's my birthday? Yeah, but it's not. (laughs) (laughs) So good try. Good try. And when you're listening to this, if you're listening to this on the day that it comes out, then yesterday was Heather's birthday. (laughs) Oh, man. So wish her a happy birthday. If you listen to this on Monday, November the 20th, which is the day that it's going to come out, 2023, then you can send Heather... Happy birthday greetings, because her birthday is November the 19th. She loves her birthday. I love my birthday. (laughs) Way more than most people (laughs) love their birthdays. But, uh, yep, so we'll be celebrating for the next week, and we'll even celebrate it with some turkey a few days later. That's right. I celebrate because I'm alive. I know. Something to celebrate. We are all celebrating that. Mm -hmm. Um, It could look different. Oh, absolutely it could. And there's a lot of stuff about our life that could look different. So, um, hey, so today uh, let's jump into our topic because this one just keeps coming up over and over and over and over whenever we meet with people, especially in our marriage coaching. Um, And I think that the reason why we started thinking about this so much is because so many of the couples that we talk to, if they've had any sort of trauma in their marriage. So, you know, we were just sitting here before we started and we were talking about, you know, obviously we're going to be speaking from the history of us having having journeyed through an affair. And a lot of people that we talk to, that's their story because they're attracted to our story and what we've been able to what God's been able to do in our marriage over the last 12 years. And so we talk to a lot of people that have had, um, that have had affairs in their, in their marriage. Uh, but there's also, we were talking about pornography, mm-hmm. uh, any kind of broken trust. Um, yeah. But, you know, even some of these are, you know, inappropriate texts, mm-hmm. inappropriate flirting, mm-hmm. in, just inappropriate relationships mm-hmm. that maybe have not moved into like a full blown physical affair. Um, even and, and even just lying in any way, because mm-hmm. when you lie to somebody and it's found out, then there's broken trust there because you've lied about it, and that could be lying about anything. Yeah. So. Yeah, and what's what we have found that has been happening to a lot of couples is they're having trouble moving forward because I mean, almost like if you if you picture a race and there's a starting line 
they're so far behind the starting line and they can't even get back to the starting line so that they can move forward and actually start running the race because they haven't taken the right steps mm-hmm. to get them back. And and we sort we sometimes call that ground zero when we're when we're meeting with couples, but you know, the starting line, ground zero, whatever you want to call it. And what ends up happening is they don't make it back. They don't do these steps that we're going to talk about. Four steps, basically. Mm -hmm. They don't do these. And so by the time they come to us, it's already happened like multiple times. So it may be that there was an affair and then they didn't take the right steps to get back to that starting point. And then it happened again after some healing even would go by. Or maybe they get to that point um, and they they start healing, and then more news comes out, like months later or years later. And it's like, then you're just backing up, you know, even further behind that starting line because you never really got to the starting line. Did I explain you that? You did. Okay. I'm with you. All right. Well, I know you probably are. <laughs> Let's hope that our listeners are. But I, I think that... Um, yeah, it's just it, it has been coming up so much and and I really think that it's and once they get to that point it's like, well, well now what do I do? Because we never really um you know, took the right steps. And so then it's just starting all of, it's just a, it's it's so hard. It's so hard. So yeah. we just want to we just want to go through these. We've got four S's that are going to help you to remember. And these are some steps that you can take if there has been trust broken in a relationship. So, do you want to take the first one? Yeah, I'll take the first one because it's my favorite. Okay, the first S is stop. There you go. It's that simple. Just stop. Stop what you're doing that is breaking trust in your marriage. So, stop the flirting text. Stop the inappropriate text. Stop the affair. Stop lying. Whatever it is that you're doing. Stop the pornography. Stop the pornography. Just stop. Yeah. You have to stop. And people, I think people go, well, that's obvious, right? Yeah, but I think. You would be very surprised. I mean, we have been, we have been talking with people that. Have don't not stop. Yeah. And they think but that they're. I think also the reason why is because that's easier said than done. Mm-hmm. Like you just want to say, stop. Okay. So can I do the quote from the movie yes, without him? Sort of. Sort of. Okay. So if you haven't seen Liar Liar with Jim Carrey, it's an oldie but a goodie. And he's a lawyer and his son wishes for his birthday. That he, that his dad couldn't, will, couldn't tell a lie. Couldn't tell a lie. And there's all reasons behind that that could make this so much better, but I don't want to use our entire co- podcast. So he can't tell a lie. Like he literally cannot lie. And his secretary says, hey boss, um, so-and-so, I don't know the guy's name. Because he's a lawyer. Yeah, he's a lawyer. And she says, so-and-so is on the phone and he's robbed another ATM this time at knife point and he wants your legal advice and he's so frustrated because he can't lie and he just comes over to the phone he says stop breaking the law mm, hole hey hole <laughs> yeah i don't want to get in trouble by and get flagged for explicitness um and and like that's what we want to say so many times like I wish somebody had said that to me. Like, just stop mm. breaking the law. Like, stop doing what you're doing. Yeah. And yes, that is an obvious one, but it's also one that you can say, yeah, I'm going to stop. And then if your heart's not in the right place and you're not broken, it's hard to stop. Yeah. You know, and I was just even thinking about other things that kind of break trust or that damage relationships. And sometimes it could be, alcohol. I mean, it could be gambling. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's so many things. Yeah. And and yes, if those things are destroying your marriage, then step number one is stop you stop. Mm-hmm. Just stop mm-hmm. doing it. So, yeah. 
And like Heather said, yes, it is easier said than done, but you cannot get back to ground zero. You can't mm-hmm. get to that starting line Until you if stop. you're still That's messing right. around with and it. You, and so what is, you got to find accountability, somebody to walk you through it, go seek help, whatever it takes to where you stop. And not stop and then slip, but stop. Mm-hmm. Stop doing it. Yeah, and then the second thing, S would be sever, and that is to cut off whatever that thing is. Mm-hmm. So not only are you stopping, but you are you are basically amputating. You are mm-hmm. cutting off any sort of connection or tie to whatever that is. And so sometimes that's taking some really drastic steps. Um, if they're is some betrayal uh, because of a member of the opposite sex, then not only are you stopping that, but you are you are doing everything that you can, maybe even to the just to the extreme that you're no longer going to be anywhere near that person. Like this could even be sometimes as extreme as changing jobs mm-hmm. and. You know, it could be, I mean, uh, and a lot of quitting times... Quitting a gym. Quitting a gym. It may be that you're putting some some safeguards in place on your computer, on your phone, you know, things that your spouse um, is able to keep an eye on and, ta- and, and hold you accountable or some other person that's able to hold you accountable. Um, but it is 100% cutting it off. Yeah. There's actually a scripture in Matthew that says, if your right hand causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it Mm. away. Yep. Like cut it off. Yeah. The end, no matter how hard that is um, and how you think it's impossible, it can be done if it can save your marriage. Well, I remember, you know, when we were going through, um, we journeyed through infidelity very soon. I mean, like the first day, I think that was, you know, one of the things that I told you, I said, there will be, you, you cannot have any contact. Like there will be no, um, no texting, right. No talking, no mm-hmm. running into this person mm-hmm. accidentally. Mm-hmm. You know, it is, you are completely severing any ties, any, any type of, contact whatsoever and and i think that um that that people that have broken trust they need to take that really really seriously Mm -hmm. and you know sometimes it's a really difficult situation because there's uh Mm co-workers and people don't know what to do because they're like well i can't lose my job or i can't quit my job and sometimes there just has to be some really difficult conversations between you and your spouse and um, make some decisions. And obviously, you don't want to do things that's going to hurt your your family. Um, but uh, I also believe that God's going to honor those choices and the choices that you make to save your marriage and strengthen your marriage and, you know, if it does, um, if it is kind of taking a risk and maybe maybe you are changing positions and maybe you're losing a little bit of money or whatever that might look like, um, you know, in the long run, God's going to honor that and is going to is going to take care of you and your family. I agree. All right. So the third S is the word is secrets. And so obviously we're not telling you to have secrets, <laughs> but that's how you're going to remember because, you know, we had to do the cute little uh, all S's, but it's it's that there can't be any secrets. Like, like no, no more, not just no more secrets, mm-hmm. which that's, that's a no-brainer, you know, that, that there's no more secrets because if there's been broken trust then you've had this history, um, no matter how long it's been, there's been some history of you having secrets. And so from that point forward, there are no more secrets. But where we run into couples that have some of the biggest problems is that they never made it back to ground zero or that starting line because they never came clean about everything. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Well, and I mean, that's even part of our story. Like when, when I was um, caught, I still didn't want to tell you everything because I was thinking, gosh, he forgave me for, or this was hard enough at that point. There wasn't, we weren't talking about forgiveness, but when you found out, I was like, this is hard enough. I don't want to tell him everything because surely he couldn't forgive everything that I've done. And so like that, I mean, and I get that train of thought. You're like, well, if that killed him, then, Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, that being the biggest thing killed him, surely I can protect him is what I was thinking from all the other stuff. Um, I wanted to protect you because then maybe we could heal quicker or Mm -hmm. it wouldn't hurt you as bad. And and what I found out, and luckily, very quickly, everything <laughs> came out, and you and you were so um, open to knowing everything, and and I think that it's important, a, an important question for people to ask, like, is there something else? Is there anything else you need to tell me? Because what happens is, if you ask that question then it opens up the the door for your spouse to be honest. Mm-hmm. But if you only sit in the, I can't believe you did that, mm-hmm. then it's like, well, I can't add anything else to that. Now, with that being said, it's not the responsibility of the person who finds out, um, you know, you shouldn't beat yourself up and think, well, gosh, I should have asked if there was anything else. Right. No, I mean, no. But if you're listening to this and there hasn't been that conversation, or if you ever find yourself in a spot of broken trust, just remember, it's a good question to ask. Like, hey, if we're starting over, if since there's broken trust and I'm going to forgive you and try to rebuild trust, we've got to be able to rebuild trust from the starting point. Mm -hmm. And we can't get to that starting point unless I know everything that's going on. Mm -hmm. And that, so I, I, you know, definitely don't feel bad if you didn't ask that question, but for future reference, or if there's something that you need to go, Hmm, maybe I don't know everything. It's just super important to be able to deal because what happens is when there's confession to any type of mistrust and you start rebuilding, if you start building trust again, if you forgive and, and start moving forward, then that wound that you experienced starts to heal. I mean, that's, that's the point is you start healing. Well, if something comes up that happened months before or even years before or a whole truth not told. Mm -hmm. And then it's just like ripping that wound right back open. And it's even worse. And it's even worse because it's like I was trying to trust you again and now I really can't trust you. Mm -hmm. So the process of even trying to get back to ground zero is excruciating because it's like I was trying to build trust and now that's gone again. Mm-hmm. And so being able to trust now is even more difficult. Mm-hmm. Now, I would like to say that our God is big enough for that. Yeah. And we are walking with some couples who are fighting through that second, um, mm-hmm. you know, that second tear off of the band aid to where everything's exposed again. And they are healing, it can be done. But it makes it so much more difficult. Well, I, I think, you know, I've thought about this because because we have journeyed recently with multiple mm-hmm. um, couples that this has happened to. And I think that the reason why that has, why it's like that is because sometimes there's some sort of trauma, there's some sort of crisis in their mar- in your in a marriage, and they they think that they can handle it by themselves. Mm-hmm. And they so they start that don't tell anybody. Nobody knows, and they start trying to work on their marriage, trying to forgive. And trying you're talking to, about handling it as a as a couple, as a couple, not just yeah, yeah, yeah. one individual person, right, right, right. Yeah. And so they start trying, and then as it is with all sin, it comes into light at some mm-hmm. point. That's right. 
And you can fool yourself and try to keep convincing yourself that nobody's ever going to find out what happened. But somehow it always comes into the light. And so that's usually what happens is, is this second revelation of some sort comes into the light. And then the couples are like, oh, my gosh, we mm-hmm. have to have help. Right. Because we thought we were doing good, and then this happened. Right. And so they come to us, and then it's like, well, somehow we got to get these people back to ground zero. Mm-hmm. So this is where all this is coming from. Right, right. And so I think that for it's it's also, it's not just for the person that's been betrayed that all of the secrets have to come out. It's also for the person that's hiding all of this. Mm-hmm. Like how you... You can't, because all along the way, there's already going to be shame and guilt. But if you're also hiding something, then it's just amplified. And you, and at some point, there's going to be a strong enough conviction, especially as you're growing. If you're doing all the things to heal and you're growing closer to the Lord, which is a big, big part of healing— you're going to start feeling a conviction of the of the holy spirit and at some point it's going to eat you alive to to where you have to confess because confession is a part of the gospel and so you're going to confess you're going to want to and need to confess and if you just keep punting it down the road and punting it down the road further and further i mean at some point like i said it's for it's for you as mm-hmm. as well as the person that you've betrayed, as well as the spouse that you've betrayed. So here's the uh, here's here's the the other part, um, and maybe we can try to talk through this a little bit. So let's just say that there is this couple out there. They're listening to this one or the other. They think that they're healing. They think that they're making some progress, but there's some skeletons in the closet. Mm-hmm. What should they do? Well, first we need to define skeletons in the closet <laughs> because here's yeah. the thing. If you're if you're married and you're I mean these are things that have happened in your marriage. That's like right. I don't want anybody to go, "Hey, we talked at the beginning of our marriage and said, "Hey, let what happened in high school or college, let's just say, "Hey, we had maybe didn't make good choices and we're moving on. Like that's between you and your spouse. And I'm not saying like, Oh, and when I was a, you know, junior in college, this happened. Like if you've come to a point, this is things like in your marriage, right? Right. Yes. Okay. So, I mean, there has to be a conversation about whatever has happened. And, especially if you're trying to re- rebuild trust. Mm-hmm. And so let's just put that out there. If you're trying to rebuild trust and there's still something that you're hiding, because and I think it's in Psalm 139 that says that the darkness is as light to you. Like, even though we think something's in darkness, God sees it. Mm-hmm. And not only that, but he wants to bring things into the light so they can be dealt with because it can't be dealt with in darkness. So like you said, you may think, oh, nobody's ever going to know that, but that it does have a way of coming out. And you would much rather you tell your spouse that yeah. Yeah. than them find out. I think that's a great point because that was one of the things that I was thinking about is like, how, what do you, how much do you tell? What right. do you, what, how, you know, how do you even know what to tell? Mm-hmm. And I think the, the, you know, that's a conversation for you and your spouse to talk through sort of together, but also if if you, I mean, can look into the future, which nobody really can, but if you can look into the future and think, okay, if she finds this out mm-hmm. from, or he finds this out from somebody, you know, how is that going to affect things? And so that's what you have to be proactive in is, all right, I'm going to tell you these things because you don't need to find out some other way. Mm-hmm. And and so that's kind of a good starting point. And I would say also, like, if you're just in this weird situation where you're like, well, gosh, I think we're, I think we're doing better, but I didn't really tell everything, and I'm really scared to tell everything, y- you may want to get some help, like, mm-hmm. for 
for a couple, you know, that you trust, a mentor, you know, a godly um, husband and wife to kind of come around you and sort of help mm-hmm. with that with that well, situation. Well, and having a conversation with your spouse about, hey, I want to be really um, proactive and making sure that we are at a healthy point to start. Yeah. And I just want to make sure that you are comfortable with the fact that you know everything and um, that we've talked about everything. And there's some details that I haven't shared with you. Mm-hmm. You know, is that something that you want to know? That's good. You know, mm-hmm. um, because... Because they may be at a spot where they're yeah, like, okay, I, I, I know I, enough. Right. And, and at that point, though, if that decision is made, they need to know, all right, I am choosing this. That's right. I'm choosing to not... That's right. Want to know and and and, and if also, something comes out right. later, you, then you've said we're yeah. moving forward. And that's okay. The, sure, like that is sure. okay if that's the way. That's because right. I know that there are some betrayed spouses out there that kind of are in that spot where they're like, there may be some more stuff, mm-hmm. but I don't but, want, I, I don't want to know what it right. is. Like, and I hope that it's not. And it may even be that you go to you go to your spouse and you go, look, we're starting fresh. Mm-hmm. Like I, I, I know there could be some other stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and if, and, and it may even be that you, Hey, if you need to go and tell somebody, you know, just for your sake, but I don't need to know anything else. Yeah. I mean, that's, I, I don't think that that honestly, that's probably not the healthiest mm-hmm. thing to do. It's better to just let's be real and honest mm-hmm. with each other from this point forward. That's right. Um, but we also know that there's, there does come a time where a spouse may be, I, I've heard enough. And, yeah. and and I think some of that is a little bit like more in the details. We've talked about that a bunch. Like, yeah. hey, just trust me. I know this happened, but I don't need to know yes. all the details. And trust me, oh. you don't you don't need to know all the details. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. think you do, but you mm-hmm. don't. And you'll never know enough. That's, That's the right. thing. Well, you'll and I've heard enough. you tell people so many times in, in our coaching sessions that, you think the details are going to help you put the puzzle together, but it doesn't. No, like it doesn't. it's just all these pieces out there that you think, oh, if I know this and this and this, then I can finally put the puzzle together and understand why it happened right. or how it happened. Mm-hmm. And it never happens. Right. It's like the pieces just multiply. Yep. And yep. they don't fit together. <laughs> yep, that's right. And so, yeah, you're never going to know enough details. And so we're not we're not talking about the details, really. Yep. We're not talking mm-mm, about mm-mm. keeping secrets. However, the betrayed spouse has the right to ask. Sure. And you need to answer. Um, but I'm speaking from a betrayed spouse, and I'm telling you, you do not want to ask all of the details. Get enough information to where you know that your spouse is being truthful and honest and will answer whatever you ask them, but then stop asking. That's a, a good word. That's a good way to say it. Okay, last thing, and we're going to go through this really fast, but the last S, so you'll remember, is sand. And what we're saying here is, is that there has to be this line drawn in the sand. We, this is where a lot of couples make make a mistake because They don't really lay down the law. The betrayed spouse doesn't really say, hey, if you don't stop and sever and secrets, you know, if those things don't stop, then this is what's going to happen. And so there's no there's no real consequence if it happens again. Um, And we've seen this over and over where it happens again. And then they're like well, I don't really know what to do now because I didn't really say Mm -hmm. that I was out of this marriage if it happens Mm -hmm. again. And so they're like, do I just let them get away with it again and we start fresh now? Mm -hmm. And it's just so complicated. Right. Well, and then not only that, but, you know, you're talking about drawing a line in the sand needs to be once all the secrets have come out. Yeah. <laughs> because And it has to be in that order because if you draw the line in the sand and say, okay, if anything ever happens again, I'm gone because I'm not going to, that's habitual sin at that mm-hmm. point. But yet later something comes out and in secret that happened before you drew the line in the sand where you're like, well, but it happened mm-hmm. way back then. 
but I just found about, out about it now is that path. So that's why it's so important to do the order, yeah. you know, yeah. to make sure. Every, so it's like before we draw this line in the sand, let's talk about the secrets. Yeah, it's almost like that starting line is the line in the sand. That's right. That's right. So, you know, you're making your way to the starting line by stopping, severing, mm-hmm. no more secrets. That's right. And then once those three things happen, then it's like you're drawing the starting line and you're saying, okay, we're going to yeah. start from right here. But just like I told you, if this happens again, mm-hmm. I will not stay in this marriage. That's right. And and I knew not only that to be truth, but you were very firm and very serious about that. Yeah. Like I knew there wasn't going to be like, okay, yeah, whatever. Like you were serious. And And here's the other thing that, you know, we are so pro-marriage. I mean, obviously, you guys know that. We are for marriage, and God is too. And we know that God hates divorce. We also know that there are situations that you just have to get out of. And if there's abuse or habitual um, infidelity, you know, um, uh, just addictions that are nonstop, there's stuff that puts you in danger, and you just can't keep living that way. And we will tell people in those situations, you have every right to get out of this. And at the same time, we know that even making that decision, that that God can redeem that situation, which we have talked before on this podcast about God redeeming those situations, not necessarily in saving a marriage, but then what happens after that, even in both of those people's lives, maybe even separately, it still can be redeemed. But we also believe that even after a marriage has ended, that God can still work a miracle to bring that marriage Mm -hmm. back together. But at some point, there are, just like Henry Cloud's book, Necessary Endings, there are necessary endings sometimes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you draw that line in the sand, and then something happens, and at that point, there's probably a necessary ending that has to happen. We believe that God is still big enough to repair that. We know of stories. We actually have two friends in this community, couples that got divorced and then later got remarried. And there's a great book uh, by Jeff and Cheryl Scruggs that's called I Do Again. And I think they were divorced for seven years and then started dating again and got remarried. And now they have a marriage ministry Mm -hmm. that's just incredible. So, yeah, yeah, so God's bigger than all that. Um, But that line in the sand is really important to move forward. And, you know, my favorite part of drawing a line in the sand, that's why I like it a little better than Ground Zero, is it has such a positive, um, the starting line is what I'm saying, the starting line, drawing that line in the sand. Ground Zero to me just has a negative connotation to it. But that line in the sand, the starting line, I love the picture, and I know that I've told this story before on here, so bear with me, but it's just such a beautiful story of the woman caught in adultery and and Jesus saying to those people who wanted to stone her, of course, this is the popular part of the story, of those who are sinless, you who are without sin, throw the first stone. Well, all the men drop, their, drop the stone because they've all sinned. And then he's there with just this woman and he kneels down in the sand and writes something, could have drawn a line. But then my favorite part of the story is when he lifts her head and he said, you are forgiven. Now go and sin no more. And I think that is such a beautiful picture when we think about marriage and drawing a line in the sand is that it is turning around completely and going the other direction. So whatever it is that you have done to break trust, the infidelity, adultery, oh, that's the same thing, um, pornography, lying, um, addictions, whatever it is that you are doing to break trust, you get to turn away from that and walk completely in the other direction. But it's that doing these four things so that you can walk and go and sin no more and work on your marriage and honor God with your decisions. But 
in doing that, it's just so, so important to get the starting line right. Definitely. Great word to end on. Hey, thank you guys for listening. And uh, we hope that you'll share this with some friends and we'll see you again next week.